right. Joining us now, Katie Pavlich, editor at townhall.com and Fox News contributor, and Joe Concha, columnist at The Messenger and Fox News contributor. Uh, Katie, here, what do we got up here? Let's look at these. All the, this is more coincidences. Okay, let me mm -hmm. see. Trump faces arraignment August 23rd. First, G, wait, we get this right? Trump faces rain August 23rd. When's the first debate? August 23rd. All right. First GOP debate. August 2nd, Trump Organization civil suit. Uh, that's another court day. January 15th, Iowa caucuses. Got to love that. The uh, E. Jean Carroll civil defamation lawsuit the same day. These are just coincidences, Katie. January 29th, pyramid scheme class action suit. Whoops, another day. March 5th, Super Tuesday. Oops, another court day. Uh, we'll go on and on. It's up on the full screen. I can't read it fast enough. Katie pa <laughs> This is such political stuff. It's just pathetic. And... Joe Biden and them, Merrick Garland, must think that Americans are the stupidest people on the face of the earth. Well, it's so interesting to watch this play out because the left claims that they want to run against Donald Trump, and yet you have this DOJ weaponization of the system against the former president, criminalizing free speech, criminalizing the ability to talk about, you know, talk to your supporters mm -hmm. and tell them to gather peacefully, by the way. Um, and yet, they're building him up. I mean, there's there's stories in the, in CNN, the New York Times, just this week saying Trump could win, and yeah. he can win. I mean, he needs to have a different strategy than last time around. It would be good if his campaign manager didn't get arrested in July and then running out of money. But he he can win and always has had the ability to win. And so by them trying to take him out through the legal process by bogging him down with, as you just mentioned, the whole calendar, they are bleeding him dry in terms of money. I mean, he's having to spend millions upon millions of dollars on these legal teams who are now dealing with, you know, dozens of indictments. But in terms of their narrative, I mean, he's just becoming stronger in the primary and has an opportunity to, to beat them in the general election. And so they did this in 2016, where they, they built him up, built him up, built him up early in the primary, thought that they could beat him. He ended up beating Hillary Clinton, and then they sabotaged his first, uh, his first uh, tenure that. as president with the Russia hoax and the special counsel and on and on and on. I think there's one guy in Washington who doesn't agree with the mainstream consensus reasoning that Trump is the easiest guy to beat. You know who that is? No idea. Joe Biden. Right. Joe Biden does not agree that Trump is the easiest guy to beat. And I think that has a lot to do with these crazy indictments that everybody sees right through, as Katie was describing. And as this court, di this, these, these court dates, was, mm -hmm. he, Joe, Joe Biden wants him in jail. And if you can't have him in jail, Joe Biden wants him in front of the firing squad. Somebody wrote today that one of these uh, statutes could actually put you in front of the firing squad. I know that's far-fetched. It's not going to happen in uh, 2023. That could happen in 2024. That was a joke. But I'm just saying, Joe Biden doesn't want to face Donald Trump. And were you, did you mention the New York Times? I did. All right. Well, Joe Biden's not campaigning. I mean, he, he's, he's quite literally sitting York on the Times beach. The New York Times-Siena poll, which some people think is a good poll. I don't know enough about it, shows Trump winning the primaries easily and beating Biden. Yep. All right, Joe Concha, that's got something to do with this, too. All this stuff is linked. There's not coincidences. Joe Biden has to campaign this time around. Uh -huh. And he has to campaign on a record this time around. So if you ask people who are on the fence, right, as far as who do you think is going to handle the economy better? Donald Trump. Mm. Who do you think is going to handle crime better? Donald Trump. Who can effectively secure the border? Obviously, Donald Trump. Education, foreign policy. We could go down the line and all the issues line up for whoever the Republican nominee is. But I don't think these legal actions that we're seeing here are happening because they want to put Trump in jail. I think it's because they want to keep him in the news cycle right through the 2024 oh, election. Oh. And the focus goes off of Biden and his record that we just talked about. And it goes to Donald Trump and not even Trump policy, but Trump, the person and the leader. So it's challenge. a distraction strategy. Yes. Distract from his from Biden's lousy record. Precisely. <laughs> well, look at Devin Archer this week. I think right? they're the more problem? than happy to put him in prison. I, I think they'd be well, happy. Well, icing on the cake. <laughs> you know, I, I started out saying it sarcastically, but now I don't know. I'm not sure at all. Because remember, go back to the midterm election night. Biden said he'd do whatever it would take, use the government to stop uh, Trump from running. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't. Uh, but look at what about Biden? I mean, are we ignoring Biden's criminal family yeah. allegations. <laughs> where are those? That, that's in the, the New other York side Times of the Sienna coincidental Paul. schedule here, yeah. where 
you know, something happens, you know, something happens with the Hunter Biden situation. He gets this sweet, sweetheart plea deal. Or there's more evidence. Like, for example, today, Joe Biden, there's a letter that he actually wrote to Devin Archer on vice presidential uh, stationery. Oh, he did? I yes, didn't see saying this. that, you know, sorry, I didn't get to talk to you more. This is a, a president who claimed that he never even met or spoke to any of these business partners. Huh. There's a letter that Devin Archer has um, from the vice president. Uh, meaning he was not out of office when he was doing these business dealings wow. and being involved. Um, but, you know, all of the time, whenever that news breaks, within 24 hours, Boom. something with Trump Boom. breaks as well. Boom. And so you can either say, you know, the, the court system, the Department of Justice knows nothing about the schedule or they know everything about the schedule. And because they have no credibility, I think people are going with the latter on that one. Last word, Joe Concha, after this latest indictment charges, blah, 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 Trump's polls up or down? They continue to go up. Yeah. He blots out the sun. Yeah. If you're DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, whoever's running for the Republican nominee, it's 2016 all over again. Yeah. No one can get any airtime because everybody's talking about this. And on that issue, too, I mean, they've had a really hard time distinguishing themselves from Trump out. on yeah. the economy. But you can't take the side of the DOJ either. So they really are back into a corner when it comes to going after Trump on other issues. This Jack Smith guy is a singularly unpopular looking guy. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Interesting description. But... Merrick Garland's behind him, and Joe Biden's behind him. Yeah. Make no mistake about that. Joe Concha and Katie Pavlich. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate you. it very much.